Hello, I've got another net galley to talk to you about today and it's one that is part historical fiction, part Russian folklore and it is called The Witch and the Tsar. Now, we've all heard the legends of Baba Yaga and in the stories she is this sort of fearsome, grotesque witch with iron teeth and everybody's frightened of her. But what the author has done is that she's gone through legends and stories about Baba Yaga and she's found a reference to um, an earth goddess. And so the Baba Yaga in this story is very, very different. She might have lived for centuries, but she is still, she still looks like a woman in her prime. And there is a humanity to her as well. She is immortal because she's the daughter of the mother goddess Mokash. And she has an affinity with animals. She's got a wolf and an owl that she talks to. She can converse with all animals. As the Baba Yaga of legend, she does live in a house with chicken legs, so this house can move all the way around. But the townspeople, the villagers, they seek her out to heal. And she uses the nature around her to make her potions. But as happens, people start to distrust her and she ends up living a lot of her time on her own, deep in the forest. She is immortal. She is the daughter of the mother goddess, but she is also half mortal. So there is, as I said, there is this human side to her. The story takes place at the time of Ivan the Terrible, though when we first meet Ivan, he hasn't got that reputation. And the author gives us a glimpse into the 16th century Russia, the culture, the food, the costumes, the traditions, the beliefs. And then she moves on and we have the sort of historical fiction part where Ivan the Terrible is going through Russia, destroying towns, destroying villages. And Yaga follows him because she is trying to bring comfort and healing to the people that he is destroying. At the same time, she finds love. So you've got a love her love story within this event as well. She comes to realise that the only way to defeat Ivan the Terrible, the only way to save Russia, is to contact the gods to get their help. And she knows that the cost of doing this will be, be huge. But she's got to put Russia and the people first before herself. She is a strong character. We have lots of other characters as well. Wonderful characters. Uh, the animals especially, the wolf and the, the owl. You meet the other, some of the other gods and goddesses. Slavic folklore, I've, I've been on Google and there's not an awful lot there. Roman and Greek mythology, there's stories about all the different gods, but there doesn't seem to be about the gods in Slavic fol folklore. So these names, Peran, <coughs> excuse me, Volos, they're, they're names we, we don't know, we don't know anything about. But we do meet them in, in this story. She's, as I said, oh, excuse me, I've got a frog. <coughs> oh, swallowed something. Um, 
as I said, she's got, um, uh, she's a strong character. She is someone who's in control of her own life and destiny. And you've got the historical fiction built into it with the story of 16th century Russia. A super read. It comes out in December. So that is The Witch and the Tsar. And uh, I'll catch you later. So take care. And uh, bye.